Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to do some topiary maintenance. Uh, these are um, topiaries uh, in containers that I have created uh, during the uh, year last year. There are actually videos for all of them. And then I got one additional uh, topiary to create. Uh, this is a gold mop cypress. And I kind of did this all um, chartreuse container. So this is a gold mop cypress that's been um, turn, topiary, topiaried. Uh, and then there's a uh, hookera and an Everillo Carex in this container. So it's just uh, yellow on yellow on yellow uh, throughout this container. Uh, this Gold Mop Cypress is ready for a little bit of maintenance to get it back into uh, shape uh, because it's put on quite a bit of growth uh, this spring. This is really uh, kind of quick and easy. I, this one was limbed up in that video about uh, six or eight inches just so it would sit up above uh, these two perennials. This is about as tall as these perennials will get. So I've got it limbed up as much as I want to. Uh, I just want to come back in here and uh, just kind of reshape it uh, back into a bit more of a globe. There's a few pieces hanging way low down on the bottom that I'm going to get rid of uh, entirely uh, to make sure it still looks like it's been uh, limbed up. And again, this is pretty quick and easy. Um, it, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is something you'll learn as you go. Uh, if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter because it just grows right back out of it. Uh, but there you go, a non-perfect circle uh, created out of, a, uh, out of a gold mop cypress that was limbed up uh, so that it will be the appropriate height uh, for this container. Uh, over on this side, uh, in this bed over here, I've got a Japanese holly uh, that I uh, topiaried in the fall. This was on clearance. It was only a few dollars. Uh, it had five plants uh, in the container. And so I had to <laughs> initially had six intertwined plants. There's still two here uh, together. Uh, anything trying to come up from the base of this, uh, I'll prune off. And then the top, I eventually want this to be a two ball topiary. So I want some vertical growth in the middle here that will come up and I can create a second ball. I've got a two ball topiary in the backyard. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but I'm gonna make sure I don't cut anything right here in the very top. This one just really doesn't need much in general. I'm just trying to, uh, the main thing I'm doing here is I'm taking off some of this new growth and trying to get some light in here and try to make this ball fuller than it currently is. And so just by simply slowing down some of the growth on that's happened this spring, I can create some branching in the middle of this contain in the middle of this ball uh, to fill it out. So this is just more of a delicate little approach. But again, I'm hoping uh, that I can get right here on top that little piece of new growth right there i want it to start coming up so i'm going to get close to it but stay away from it uh, and you'll see if you're following the uh, channel what i'll do is this piece comes up i'll let it get up about this tall and then we'll create another ball uh, right up here at the top but i think that's all i want to do on that just a little bit of delicate pruning just to slow this ball down a little bit so that it will um, become fuller. I have this two ball variegated boxwood topiary uh, here that uh, I created from uh, another clearance plant uh, last year. And I, I was able to strip this one stem here and create two balls. I eventually want to create a third ball. There's not really a good volunteer yet um, that's vertical right in the center of this plant for me to use. So for now, I'm just going to kind of get this, get this boxwood back in shape eventually something will volunteer here in the middle. I have one vertical little piece here, but it's not actually centered uh, over the plant. And so I don't think that that would be a good candidate. So for now, just gonna do a little bit of pruning on this. Uh, again, eventually I'm gonna get a volunteer. So sometimes um, this topiary thing is about patience. Uh, this can, I really like this container. It's, uh, there's some nasturtium in here, which are blooming already. There's some alyssum that's uh, blooming. Uh, kind of a white on white on white theme and then the nasturtium uh, bloom with those uh, bright uh, orange flowers but again this is just kind of a quick and easy uh, quick and easy process I'm just going to get the, the parts of this ball that have stretched out uh, up at the top um, cut 
try to make this ball fuller, uh, which will happen again by holding it back a little bit. And then uh, from there, as soon as I get a volunteer that wants to go vertical, uh, I'm going for it. Uh, that may be a while. So I'm gonna come in here and just prune the lower ball, just like I did those in the front yard, uh, just basically uh, getting it back, uh, getting it back into shape without cutting all the other things uh, that are in this container at the same time. I've got a couple really low limbs here that I'm gonna take completely off to give these other things in the container an opportunity to, uh, to grow underneath it. So I think that's probably it. I got a couple little stray, a couple little stray parts and pieces here. That's it. I think right there. Uh, it's back into shape. Uh, got this ball full again, uh, and again, waiting for that top part. The next one over here, uh, I started topiarying one into just a single ball, uh, and uh, this one was not a great candidate uh, for becoming a topiary, and so it's not raised up all that much. There just wasn't, there's not a single trunk on this thing, and uh, so it's just going to be a little one ball uh, topiary. Anything that comes back out low down at the bottom, you can just pull off or prune off, and the rest of this plant I'm just going to keep in a small a small ball, just a one ball topiary. These two containers will look great next to one another in the future as one of them will be a multi ball topiary and the other one will be. But there's no, this pruning something into a ball or is honestly something that you, you probably just have to jump in and do. There's no like great technique to teach someone. Um, you probably have to make a mistake or two, but it just doesn't matter as long as, as, long as you don't you know, decapitate the whole thing. Uh, there is really no mistake to be made here on a boxwood. Uh, but there, got it cut back in, into, a nice, into a nice ball shape again. I'd like to get some growth on this side, which I haven't gotten yet. Uh, and uh, I, by holding this back some, I should be able to force some growth here, and that'll look quite a bit better. Uh, next up, I've got this nightlight camia cypress. This was actually planted in the garden in the front yard and uh, has been moved over to a container. Also has nasturtium planted with it. And I'm going to turn this one into a, into a topiary, I'll make the first steps toward it anyway. If you get in, we get in here close, you can see that there's some, just some very low limbs uh, down at the bottom of this thing that uh, almost just simply removing those is almost good enough to have this thing uh, look like a topiary already. For this, I'll use some pruners. I use the hedge, hedge shears uh, for the other jobs you've seen. Uh, this one I'm going to get in here and uh, use a pruner to cut down very low on the plant and remove these low, these low, low branches to start with. This one has a crazy side branch on it right here. I'm gonna remove the whole thing. This one will seem kind of cruel. Uh, but right there already, we are on our way. I could probably replant this in this container to make it stand up uh, more vertical again. But very quickly, we went from, you know, full to the bottom. These little teeny tiny branches on a conifer may require a very sharp pair of uh, scissors or a small pair of uh, pruning shears okay so all that's been all that's been cleaned up any dead cut out of it that kind of thing so there you go and then I'll come back in up here on the top and just slow this growth down on the top just like that and just like that in just a couple minutes, we have the start of a, uh, of a new topiary. It's got a bit of a lean to it. You see this, uh, where it's got a bit of a lean to it. I can come back in here and just straighten that out in the container, or I can allow the lean, which is honestly, um, which is really kind of interesting in and of itself. But uh, I've, I've slowed the growth down on the top. There's a couple pieces of new growth still up here to hold back. And by slowing all this part down, I'll get some new growth uh, around this area right here. It'll also try to put on some new growth down at the bottom, which I will, uh, I'll clean up as needed. Uh, 
but this ball should fill in uh, pretty quickly. The four topiaries I was doing maintenance on, uh, I've done nothing to them since I initially uh, uh, topiaried them, uh, and there's videos for that on the channel. And you, so there's very little maintenance to do here. A couple benefits uh, when we're using containers, if things are matted right down to the container, uh, they tend to uh, invite slug problems. So I, I kind of like a little bit of air you know, under these uh, shrubs, regardless of whether or not um, I'm trying to turn them into topiaries, maybe limbing them up uh, around the base is probably a good idea anyway. It just gives a hiding place uh, to slugs. This container doesn't look great today, but this is an oregano in this container, and these two nasturtium will quickly fill in the understory of that container, and uh, this will flush back out and start to look more, uh, more of a round ball uh, in time. This is the very first pruning since I, my initial topiarying on this uh, variegated boxwood. There's a croton in this uh, container. There's some vinca and uh, there's a, a, a sweet potato vine uh, in this container that will kind of quickly fill in uh, the understory of that one as well. So thank you guys very much for following along with the channel and uh, the progress that's being made in this landscape here in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, Zone 7B. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when I upload a video. Uh, because I have lots of content like this uh, coming over the course of the summer just on general maintenance uh, now that this landscape is establishing itself. Thanks for watching.